Well, Paul's come to the end of a journey. As everyone goes their separate ways, he faithfully says, don't stop believing. Next, Midweek Move. to the Midweek Move, the podcast where we're going through the scriptures line by line, verse by verse to discover its context, its meaning, and practical application. I'm Dallas. I'm so glad you guys have joined us. We're watching us on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, however you found us. Hey, thank you for being part of our community. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are ending a fantastic journey through the book of Acts. And uh, with us at the, at the ending is the one who was with us at the beginning, Pastor Scott. How are you, sir? I'm good. Acts 28. What? We are 28 here. 28 chapters of the Bible. Um, you know, when we started this journey, the midweek move, we were like, man, uh, when we started this journey, we weren't doing anything on campus in the middle of the week. Right. Like, I'm just like, and what we came to was like, man, we need to provide something. We need, there needs to be something in the midweek that right. people can make a move, they can grow, they can learn, they can, all those things that we talk about. Yeah. And in the midst of this, We've started doing things on campus on Wednesdays again, and yet we're still putting this stuff out. And uh, it's been a crazy journey. Man, we've had people from, <clears throat> we've had guests from Virginia, we've had guests from Texas, we've had guests from Georgia. Georgia. We've had guests from anywhere else? Uh, I think those are, the main, those are the main places that we've had. Yeah, that's it. That's basically it. Yeah. So we've had, and we've had different guests uh, from right here in Louisiana. Right. And so we've had all manner of people, ages, backgrounds, cultures. We've mm -hmm. had so many different. The thing I love about it is we've had so many different viewpoints mm. that have been able to be spoken in these midweek moves, not just one segment of, uh, okay, uh, 53 years old, Scott's the only one that's going to be talking about right. this, right? And so we've had all these different viewpoints, but what I love about it is every viewpoint didn't go to opinion. Every viewpoint went back to Scripture. Exactly. Which is exactly what we've been talking about. No agenda, no theological background that's being pushed. It's like, what does the Word of God actually say? In and context? not dropping the hammer on somebody mm. if it's like, oh, that may be a different viewpoint or something. It's like, okay, if if it's not in this chapter right here, then where is it in the rest of the Word of God? And let's reference that and exactly. walk through that. And so that's the thing I really loved about this is there's no added pressure it's just people having a conversation about the Word of God, reading the Word of God, having a conversation about it. Right. And I love the fact that in the things that aren't absolutes, we have said that. Yeah. We've said, hey, there are some theologians that think this and some that think this because of this. Right. Um, here's where we kind of land on it in our thinking, mm. but it's not necessarily an absolute. Right. So we're not going to argue over that. <laughs> we're not going to stress over that. Right. But here's what we can learn in it. Right. And that's what I really have loved is even the things that are just opinions that we can look in a historical context, we have landed in this place of here's how we can grow in this. Mm. Here's what we can learn from this. Yeah. Not just that, like it's been really deep stuff. I was talking with one of our, our listeners the other day and he said, you know, when I do a Bible study, typically I feel like I'm just, you know, here, here's a here's a small meal that I've nuked in the microwave. You guys are like, here's some prime rib with some <laughs> some tr truffle shavings on it. And he goes, some but of these chapters I think has been like a set one of those places you go, you get a seven course meal <laughs> and you don't know what you're getting. It's right? like it's fresh every day, right? But it's like they bring one thing to you and they give you this platter and there's three different things that you can choose from, and then right. they bring another platter and there's four <laughs> different things. Some of these chapters have been like that. Right. It's been like we could have taken five verses from some of these chapters and done weeks oh, yeah. of a podcast. But yet we've stuck to our original <laughs> vision, which was like, hey, one we're going to take this one chapter at a week. But what I love is it's been manual. It's been bite-sized. It's been understandable. It's not like you have to have a theological degree to listen to a podcast. People are growing and learning some deep things. Now, Dallas, I also know, let's let's do a quick promo yeah. for some things that we're looking at in the next few weeks in our midweek move. Mm. So tell the people kind of what, what our thought process is in the next couple of weeks with our midweek yeah. move. So for the next couple of weeks, we're making a transition and we want to do kind of a Q&A style uh, conversation. And so what we're asking you guys to do is over the next week, uh, send in some questions, questions about the Bible, questions about things that we've talked about in the book of Acts. What, are, what do we think about certain theological point of views, scriptures, whatever. Let us know. Send them in. 
in, and we're going to base our show for the next couple of weeks around these questions, answering what you guys want to know as we kind of retool and set up for the next segment of this journey that we're going to yep. be doing, which is going to be <clears throat> really special and done a little bit differently throughout the summer months. Yeah, it's going to have a little bit different look. It's going to have a little bit different feel. We're still going to be uh, going through the Bible. We're still going to be line by line, context growing, all those things. It's going to have a little bit of a uh, different look to it. Right. <clears throat> um, and the style will change just a little bit. Uh, but I'm super excited about it, about <laughs> how it all um, fleshes out and what it ends up looking like. But uh, again, sending those questions, are we doing that to Media Hub? Media Hub, or you can message us through our Facebook page, Meet, uh, Midweek Move, and uh, we'll get those. And uh, Media Hub at thpstreetport.com. Put yep. that out there. There will be a link in the show notes below for you guys to check that out. And uh, reach out to us and let us know your thoughts and questions. And listen, don't put it off for like a week or so. Yeah. Like even as you're listening to this or watching this or whatever, mm-hmm. just you know, if you're not watching this, you know, just put it on pause for a second, mm-hmm. write out a question that you have and immediately send that to us yeah. because we want to get those within the next week. We want to break them down. We want to spend a couple of weeks yeah. on like if we've got 10 to 15 questions, we want to break that down into like three weeks or four weeks or something like that so that we're dealing with questions every single week. A conversation based around those questions around the Bible. Right. Not just that. If you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, leave it in the comment section right now. Like if you're like, oh, I have a question, boom, type it out. Something we say today, type it out. Let us know. A, it helps the algorithm with the analytics, but also uh, it's just a right now action for you. So that's good. You ready? I'm ready. Let's. Whew, I can't believe that we're, I we're almost feel like we're like, oh, that this is so sweet. We're holding off on going into this, but <laughs> let's hit this. Let's go. We're inching. We're <laughs> inching towards it, right? All right. Acts chapter 28. Um, where we left off last week was the shipwreck, mm. uh, you know, on Malta. And uh, God, through the midst of this tragedy, God has fulfilled his promise to Paul that nobody would die. Uh, they've, uh, th- some of them are just simply on pieces of the ship, then they're floating, uh, to shore. Right. And that's kind of where we find ourselves now. So it says now when they had escaped, now they're not escaping captors or anything else, escaping the shipwreck. So right. now when they escaped, they then found that the island was called Malta. So they didn't even really know where they were. Right. That's, I think that's interesting. And I also think that's very, um, it's very, um, important to the storyline here that we understand that as they're journeying through this and the ship's coming apart, mm. they don't know where they end up. Right. Because what, what we read beforehand was mm. it was dark. Even during the daytime, the storm made it where they couldn't see. It made their navigation almost impossible. And what we found in one chapter was the helmsman didn't even know where they were <laughs> right. because the storm was so was raging. Right. And so they were off course. They didn't know where they were going to end up. So they're just now realizing that, oh, this is the island called Malta. Right. Uh, verse 2, and the natives showed us unusual kindness, unusual kindness, giving the connotation that these natives may have been uh, may have leaned more toward the violent side to strangers, right? Or the more defensive posture. Yeah, <clears throat> showed us unusual kindness for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. So even though the shipwreck's over, it's cold because we do know this historically. It is winter time, right? So it's cold. It's raining. So they are out of the water. They're off pieces of the ship, but it's cold and it's rainy. <laughs> it's still nasty, right? But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, I want to stop right there for a second, because you and I both had similar um, thoughts about this. Exactly. Why is this, um, this isn't even a full sentence, but why is this part of this passage, why is this super interesting? It's interesting because we have Paul who is a captive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A shipper uh, captive, a captive who, you know, a couple hours beforehand was told, hey, we're going to go ahead and kill all all these prisoners. That way we don't have to worry about the consequences. And he was just barely saved by the the, uh, the men in charge. And here he is gathering bundles of sticks and laying them at the fire. At the fire. He's serving these people still. Yep. In his humility. He's 260-something ser- survivors. Right. And the only one that is saying is serving is Paul. Right. Now, the natives have served them. Right. But in the midst of all that, it's almost like Paul is going – well, wait a second. I'm not just going to sit here and let them serve me. Right. I want to be a part of this. And to me, I think that is 
is almost a part of the natives receiving them mm. is something even like this, like the spirit of Paul right. disarming whatever that defense mode would be of the natives. Absolutely. Not just that, this is a fantastic example of what I consider biblical leadership. Mm-hmm. This is a this is the Apostle Paul, yep. and he's serving. He's not going, well, you know, I'm going to take advantage of them just thinking of me as a slave, and I'm just going to hang back here. He's serving these people. He's taking care of things. He's working hard. Because it doesn't say that he was forced to serve as right. a prisoner. There's nothing in here that says that. It says he goes right. almost an intentional, I'm going to go and gather a bundle of sticks and lay them on the fire. Right. And so, like, again, this is, I think this is biblical leadership. We as people in leadership, we need to be serving people. We've talked about this before, uh, maybe not on this podcast, but, like, we just, here at the church, just because we have a title that does not dictate our responsibility. Right. We, we're we responsible for certain things, sure, but if some things take place, we take place. I remember, I'll never forget this. I tell people this often. Years ago, um, it was before service, and we just had a massive windstorm, and our parking lot was covered in leaves. And before service, you're out there with a leaf blower, walk around with one of our guys, and you're just blowing off the parking lot so people can see the parking spaces. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, we're just certain. Why, why is the pastor out there doing that? Because he saw it and he got to it before anybody else. Yeah. That's how we do things. That's how leaders should do things is, and I the, had keys to the shed. And you had keys to the shed. <laughs> <laughs> that too. That too. But we're just taking care of what we need to be taken care That's of. That's right. Yeah. And I love the fact that it says that the natives kindled a fire. Mm. Kindling. But Paul is bringing a bundle of stick. Like he's doing the heavy lifting right. in this thing. And then it says, <clears throat> okay, so here's his, uh, here's his takeaway for serving. <laughs> here's his reward for serving. A viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer whom, though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow to live. Man, what a... um, The natives didn't even realize it, but they were functioning in in a lot of times what was a religious spirit that was on the Pharisees Mm -hmm. that even dealt with Paul, which was if... If something bad was happening to you, it was because of your sin. Right. If something bad was happening to you, it was because you did something wrong, which Paul had already dealt with that with the religious crowd. He's like, no, that's not it at all. Exactly. Doesn't mean that doesn't happen, (laughs) but bad things happen. Right. Like God has already prophesied to Paul, but Paul's been through a shipwreck. Yeah. Like he's been through a traumatic experience, yet he's still blessed by God. Right. And so when these natives see it, it's almost like, oh, this guy's evil. He's a murderer because this is happening to him. <clears throat> and then it goes on to say, but he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. Now, we don't know if he's just like, ah, eh, it's okay. Right. Or if he was yelling and then he just <laughs> threw it off. We don't know. But what it does seem to connotate is he doesn't make a big deal about it. Right. So many times when things happen to us, even as believers, I think we make such a big deal about it mm. because we're trying to get more attention for ourselves than we are really mm. glory to God. That's that's, that, that's a that, oh, that's a whole conversation. <laughs> Who are you pointing to? <laughs> yeah, right. So, however, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. This is this is almost like the complete definition of double mindedness. Yeah. Okay, so he's bitten by a viper. He's evil. Right. Oh, <laughs> nothing happened to him. He's a god. Right. So it's like there's, there's no, no middle ground for there's these no guys. middle ground. But that tells us a little bit about these natives mm-hmm. and the fact that they were uh, completely isolated from civilized society, quote unquote civilized society, mm-hmm. because of this belief system. Right. Um, either you're evil or you're a god. Right. There's nothing in between, mm-hmm. which tells us a little bit even about the possibility that they could have worshipped all manner of idols or gods or sky gods or all different kinds of things right. to have this belief system. In that region, there was an estate of the leading citizen of the island. Now, leading citizen would have been the con- uh, connotation for any Roman leader who would have been in a place of leadership mm-hmm. um, amongst the islands, right. whose name was Publius, who received us and entertained us courteously for three days. And it happened that the father of Publius laid sick of a fever and dysentery. Paul went to him, went into him, and prayed, and he laid his hands on him and healed him. Now, this isn't just about a fever. Like, you can 
you can catch that. If mm-hmm. there's fever, then there's something that's contagious with it. Right. He has dysentery, which is not just flu. This is like you were not supposed to be right. in contact. Yeah. You could die. Anybody who, anybody who's uh, my age, that grew up in uh, as an elder millennial, we remember a game called Oregon Trail. And Oregon Trail, yeah, yeah. Nine yeah. times out of ten, your party died of dysentery. Dysentery. This that's is right. not a chilled type of thing. This is a serious disease. And yet he's going into that, right? Laying his hands on this guy and praying on him, and he healed him. So when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed. This is super important that <clears throat> when we when we function in what God has called us to function in, mm. and God begins to move in people's lives, when we testify, when we when we refuse to be silent about the healing power of Jesus, right. that other people hear about what God is doing, and they come. That's why the gathering is so important. It builds people's faith. Right. They also honored us in many ways, and when we departed, they provided such things as were necessary. So basically, they are... They are restocking what everything that they lost in the shipwreck. Right. I want to point out the fact, though, that like this is on the back end of a, of a miracle, them surviving everything. Paul is on his way to Rome, and we're about to hit that he he's accomplishing what God has for him. It's still a difficult road. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, they feel like, well, if I'm on my way doing what God's told me to do to fulfill, that it shouldn't be difficult. It's difficult. It's difficult. But there's blessings <laughs> in the difficulty. There's still provision in the difficulty. It was an easy ride, but God still provided for them every step of the way. Gave him favor where there need to be favor. Yep. And as he accomplished what God had for him. And it's something that we've been talking about. Uh, we talk about it a lot, but we've really been talking about it in the last week. <clears throat> and that is, where's our focus? Mm. Because in, even this morning in our staff meeting, we were talking about, I was talking about something that I'm learning right now in this season of my life. And that is, when my focus is on my pain, mm. then my response is dictated by my pain. Right. So whoever's connected to me or whatever's around me, if my lens is through my pain, my response to them, they're going to feel my pain. Right. Like I'm almost putting <laughs> that on them. Paul is refusing to do that. It's hard. Things have been hard. They're cold. They're, they have to be hurting physically. Right. Because they were in a ship wreck, mm. not just capsized. Right. It was... Because there's a difference in capsized and shipwrecked. There was pain involved in all this. There had to be physical. He's a, he'd been bitten by a viper. Yes, there was healing in it, but that was pain. And yet in every single instance, he refuses to, his lens to be the pain. Mm. His focus is Jesus. Right. It goes back to what he's already told them. I, I, my focus... Like old things are gone. My focus is on Jesus, right. the author and the finisher of my faith, you know, who for the joy set upon him endured the cross, like all of those things. So verse 11, after three months, so they've been there three months. Why is that important? Well, they needed to rest. They needed to gain the strength, but also it's winter. Right. So they needed winter to end so they didn't go into another shipwreck. After three months, we sailed an Alexandrian ship whose figurehead was the twin brothers, which had wintered at the island. And landing at Syracuse. Now, those of you that thought Syracuse was just a town in New York or a basketball team or a football (laughs) team, um, that would not be the case. We see the origins of Syracuse. And landing at Syracuse, we stayed there three days. Why is Syracuse important? Because it was a major capital city of the island of Sicily. It was known in the ancient world as a a, a capital city, a Mm -hmm. main thoroughfare. It also was uh, the home of Archimedes, Mm -hmm. the famous mathematician, who was writing um, his uh, math equation in the dirt, (laughs) and a Roman soldier put a knife to his throat, and Archimedes' response to him was, don't bother me when I'm writing an equation, and he slit his throat. The death of Archimedes. So (laughs) there's some history for you guys for Syracuse. There you go. Uh, If you never thought that Archimedes could be brought into a biblical context, we have just destroyed that narrative for you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Midweek Move. (laughs) (laughs) We desire not only bring revelation, but we want to educate you. That's it. From there, we circled around and reached Reguem. And after one day, the south wind blew, and the next day we came to Patuli. Where we found brethren. Now, this this terminology, brethren, is super important mm. because it's not natives, it's not unbelievers. There are believers that they are coming into contact as they're going from island to island. Why is this so important that we know this, Dallas? 
that there are brethren here. Yeah. Because this kind of gives us a, a feel for what's happening. Paul's message is getting out in a variety of ways. And we were talking about there's some speculation, yep. some conversation about perhaps uh, the book of Romans was written before this event took place. And these are people who they're believers because of what's taking place with the book of Romans. They've read that, they've experienced it, and now there's a community here that they're going, oh, wait, this is the Paul. Yeah, it's either correspondence that's been sent to them, it's <clears throat> maybe partial mm-hmm. parts of the uh, of the letter of Romans, mm-hmm. um, but they are... But there are believers right. <clears throat> as they're on this journey. And it says, and they were invited to stay with them seven days, and so we went toward Rome. And from there, then the brethren heard about us. They came to meet us as far as um, Appi Forum and three ends. When Paul saw them, he thanked God and took courage. Now, when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Paul was permitted to dwell by himself with a soldier who guarded him. So this gives a connotation. Paul is, again, separated. Mm -hmm. Um, We may think, oh, it's Cush and it's all good, but that's not necessarily... Some have even said, some commentators have even said that the soldier that was with Paul and guarded him took four-hour shifts and quite possibly could have been cuffed to him. Mm. So we're not sure about all that, but what we do know is that he did have separate accommodations. It did seem like they were a little more, um, uh, if not comfortable, uh, it wasn't a torturous situation. Right, it was more lax. I want to mm. rewind, though, back to 15. It says, uh, he thanked God and took courage. It's, you know, again, this is a mission. This is his journey. It's not been an easy route, but there is encouragement that comes when we are surrounded by brothers by and sisters of Christ, people yep. who get that. Um, this past weekend, you had some friends who came out of town. Just to, they had to come see you, and that encouraged you. This past week, I had friends who who drove thirty miles or thirty uh, thirty hours just to be here in Shreveport. I was encouraged by that. Yep. And there's <clears> something <throat> to be said about getting, being around people who get it, who speak the language, who understand you. And uh, you know, I take away from that. You know, we need to be actively encouraging our friends, not just our friends, but other people in the faith, because we don't know what people are going through. Now, obviously, they've heard about Paul. They're like. We're going to go encourage Paul, and they did. They were a great encouragement to him. We need to be doing the same thing. We need to be going, who in our community needs encouragement? And do that because that's what the point of the scriptures. Yep. So, you know, they tell us to um, be intentional about uh, stirring each other to love and to good works. That's taking place in here. They were stirring Paul to love and to good works by just going out there to see him. Hey, you're, we, we heard you were coming. Wanted to come here and, and encourage you here. In verse 17, and it came to pass after three days that Paul called the leaders of the Jews together. This is important because it seems that everywhere Paul goes, he looks for the Jews first. Mm. He's calling for the Jews. He wants to talk to the Jews first. Right. And I think this is so, um, this is such an awesome confirmation, not just for them, but for us, that Paul is literally doing what he said. Right. Right. He said, this goes to the Jews first and then the Gentiles, even the preaching of the gospel, to the Jew first and then the Gentile. Right. Everywhere he goes, he's looking for the Jews first. Mm. Because, again, we can talk about his Roman citizenship, but his birth is Jewish. Right. And so he never forgets that, that he's actually a Jew first. Exactly. And then a Gentile. Right. According to citizenship. So he's modeling actually what he's been saying. So when they had come together, he said to them, Men and brethren, though I have done nothing against our people or the customs of our fathers, I love the fact that he says our, Mm. not your. He's owning it. He's part of this community. He's not separating himself from them. Which is actually putting them in a tough spot. Exactly. (laughs) It would have been better for them had he separated them, (laughs) right? Yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, wanted to let me go because there was no... Uh, cause for putting me to death. But when the Jews spoke against it, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar. So he's saying the only reason why I'm here is because the Jews were speaking against this, and that's the only reason why I'm here. Not that I had anything of which to accuse my nation. And he's like, hey, I have nothing against them. Right. But here's what happened. Exactly. For this reason, therefore, I have called for you to see you and speak with you, because for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. So he's like, listen, I am here um, and while I'm here, I want to be for you. Right. So then he says, then it says to them, 
We neither received, this is what they say to him, we neither received letters from Judea concerning you, nor have any of the brethren who came reported or spoken any evil of you. So it wasn't that, to me, it is the Jews in Jerusalem and everywhere after that have washed their hands of Paul. He's not our issue anymore, and we don't even care to send any correspondence to Rome to the to the Jewish brethren to even let them know. Right. Because he's not our responsibility anymore. Right. It almost goes back to the way that Felix <laughs> dealt with Paul. Yeah. He's not my let me pass him off to somebody else. Right. So that and what we know is if it was that big of a deal, the Jews in Jerusalem would have sent correspondence to Rome. Right. This guy's coming. He's bad news. Right. He's going to stir some stuff up. He's going to try to get you to believe about this sect. Right. The way of right. which it's called. But they didn't even do that. Mm. And so we know that it wasn't that big of a deal. It was just a big deal when it was in Jerusalem. Exactly. And, the, and by not seeing that, the actual, it's them trying to cover themselves off. I'm like, well, 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 we didn't cast any false accusations, which is a, an offense right. of, a, of its own. And so he's like, look, I'm just here with you guys. You guys see I've done nothing wrong. I'm, I'm clear in the Roman eyes. And by all rights, I'm clear in the Jewish eyes. And they're, these Jewish guys are like, yeah, no, we we really don't know why you're here. We don't know. And then they say in verse 22, but we desire to hear from you what you think for concerning the sect. We know that it is spoken against everywhere. So they have heard of the way. They have heard of those that are followers of Jesus. They have heard about that. Mm -hmm. So when they had appointed him a day, they've given him a day. Mm -hmm. You have one day, all right? <laughs> Many came to him at his lodging, to whom he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God. So he's not just giving them some... Overview. He's dealing with the kingdom of God. Right. Persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets from morning till evening. So he's taking advantage of his day. Yeah. And he's taking them all the way back to the basis of their belief, all the way back to the law of Moses, which we know is starting in Genesis, the Pentateuch, all the way through the prophets. This is something that they know um, intimately. He's using the law. He's using everything they understood. And this is this is predicated like this is a common tactic he had with everyone. He goes to what people knows. When he's with the Gentiles, he speaks to them from where they understand things and brings them to who Jesus is. And he's not talking in opinion. He's trying to deal with the absolutes of the law. Exactly. And so with these guys, he's going, hey, here's Jesus in the Old Testament. Here's Jesus in the in the in the, the prophets. Look how this all points and where Jesus has intersected all these moments. Yep. Verse twenty four. And some were persuaded by the things which were spoken, and some believed disbelieved. Mm. Uh, so when they did not agree amongst themselves, they departed after Paul had said one word. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our fathers saying, go to this people and say, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have become dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. So mm. Paul is, he's not he's not discouraged that some don't believe mm -hmm. because he's believing in the Word of God, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Listen, some of them are going to believe, some of them are not. Right. Why? Because their their hearing has grown dull, their hearts, all these different things. They're hard of hearing, their right. eyes are closed. And here's why that's happening, right. so that I can heal them. Right. Verse 28, Therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles, mm. and they will hear it. Now, this cuts to the heart of every Jew. Yeah. Because now it's like, okay, if you won't listen, we are going to the pagans. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to the people that you believe cannot be saved. Period. Right. Which is interesting, because even Paul, had, several times beforehand, when he goes to the Old Testament, he points them back to the fact that the Jews have a place in the kingdom of God. Yep, they've been confronted with that, and he's like, "Look, I've I've showed you all the way through. If you don't walk with this, we're, well, I'm just going to pass you up, and I want other people who are going to listen." The thing I love about Paul is he never takes away the covenant that the Jews have with God, right? But he also doesn't use the covenant to say, "Okay, you're going to heaven." You don't have to go through Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's always coming back to Jesus, and and that comes back to his teaching for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. Right. There is no other way but through Jesus. Right. But as to the Jews and their covenant, yes, as to them was commended the oracles of God. They mm. are a covenant people. God hasn't stopped believing that. Right. God hasn't taken that covenant away yet. 
What advantage has the Jew in salvation? None, none at all. Right. Why? Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So I love the fact that Paul doesn't take anything away from them, but also doesn't... Um, What's the word I'm thinking of? <laughs> he 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 doesn't um, he doesn't shy away from the opening to the Gentiles of receiving Christ. Right. All right. Verse um, twenty nine. Twenty nine. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had a great dispute among themselves. So they're arguing amongst themselves. Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house. He's a prisoner, and he's renting a house. <laughs> And received all who came to him. And the, the key to this is uh, one of those that we know that he received was a slave by the name of Onesimus, mm -hmm. who we hear from the book of Philemon. Right. Uh, and, and, and in whom Paul talks to Philemon about receiving Onesimus, not as a slave as you would in those days, but you receive him as you would me. Right. Which, man, I know that book is super <laughs> short, but man, when you read that letter, yeah. it is so powerful. It may be a future midweek move uh, conversation. I mean, it is super, <laughs> super short, but it is so powerful. So, so we know that. that this slave Onesimus was one of the ones who received because he had come to Paul right. during this two years. And he was preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. He's a prisoner yet no one forbids him from preaching the gospel. Right. That is blessing in the midst of struggle. Yes. That God had provided a way that he was not forbidden from preaching the gospel, even in the midst of imprisonment. Mm. So good. So good. 28 is completed. We've walked through this, and we've, we've, there's so much here. And I'm going to ask you two pa uh, questions, Pastor. One, what is your big takeaway for chapter 28? And then what is your big takeaway for the entirety of the book of Acts? In 28, I think that the, the takeaway for me in 28 is all the different, all the different encounters that Paul has with people mm -hmm. from island to island, and then when he gets to Rome, and how he how he deals with that. Mm. It he had every he had every right to be heavy. He's a prisoner. What else are they going to do to him? Right. He had every right to be heavy-handed in all, all these ways. He also had every right to be quiet and not say anything and just be a prisoner. Totally. Yet he didn't do either one of those things. Mm -hmm. And I think the, that one of the big takeaways for me in 28 is just showing the balance that Paul, the anointing that Paul had upon his life, the balance that that brought, no matter what the scenario was, whether he was in front of kings, rulers, um, uh, leading citizens, right. whether he was in front of the Jews, whether he was in front of the Gentiles, whether he was front of, uh, in front of a helmsman from a ship, right. other prisoners in a ship. It was like he, he treated everybody in equal ground, but he always met them where the, they were mm. without compromising the message of Jesus. So good. And uh, from the whole book, I think what I learned going all the way to the beginning is it really is the acts mm -hmm. of the apostles. Yeah. The acts. The book of Acts to me is, is our, it is our how-to manual mm. of doing what God has called us to do. Right. Or it would be called the inaction of the apostles. <laughs> exactly. It's not. It's called the acts. Right. It's about doing what God has called you to do. And the only way they could do that was filled with the Holy Spirit. Right. And that's my takeaway is that the book of Acts is all about, and the thing that we learned from that is that it's not about our experiences. It's not about what God pours into us. It's about what do we do mm. with what God has has gifted us with? What right. do we do with the gifts of God that have been given to us? So good. I think for me, coming away from 28, it's actually uh, going back to verse 26 and 27. Uh, go to this, uh, this people and say, hearing you will hear and shall not understand and seeing you will see and not perceive. For their hearts of the people have grown dull, their ears are uh, hard of hearing and their eyes they are closed, at least they should uh, see with their eyes. And this whole thing is, again, this is they're fulfilling prophecy. 
at the same time, I go, Lord, I don't want my ears to be dim. I don't, I don't want my eyes to not see. I don't want to not be able to hear. I don't want my heart to be hardened. And to me, it's starting me like, Lord, you know, I want to be able to hear you properly. Yeah. I don't want to have be face to face with the truth being presented with all the way back. A man who is blameless and everything else, me knowing the truth and go, mm, I don't want to trust that. Yeah. And so it really started me going, Lord, I'm going to be able to hear you clearly and be able to be uh, one of those people who go, I'm going to preach the gospel. And this goes back to my whole takeaway from the book of Acts. We've seen this is the early church, and they've this is how we started as a movement, uh, the, the way, if you will. And with that, with this whole passion that's been played out, what we see is that they worked with confidence and boldness, but with humility and with the power of the Holy Spirit. And I think that that's my, my big takeaway is for me as a believer, I need to have the boldness to preach the gospel. Unashamed. Unashamed. I need to have the confidence that only comes from knowing what this word says in the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, yep. but walk with humility <clears throat> to serve people and let people know who God really is. And I think the great takeaway for all of us from Acts you can find it in Acts chapter 2. What did they do after this amazing outpouring of the Holy Spirit? And they continued. And they continued. In the apostles' doctrine, in teaching, in fellowship, the breaking of bread and prayers. Yeah. Like, okay, what do we do? We continue. Right. We don't stop. When we fall down, what do we do? Mm. We continue in the Word of God, in the fellowship, in the breaking of bread and prayers. Man, what do we do? And they continued. And you brought up a great point, Dallas. This is how the church started. Mm -hmm. But I think that maybe in our current culture, we've gone so far away from this. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reasons why we don't see as many of the acts mm -hmm. because we have strayed so far. So good. And we have fallen more under the Roman influence of religion mm -hmm. rather than the early church of family. Yeah. Love it. So good. Well, guys, we want to hear from you. What uh, What's your takeaway from the book of Acts? What's your yeah. book takeaway from Acts 28? Reach out to us, mediahub at thpreport.com. If you have questions, leave a comment down below and let us know what your questions are. We're going to answer those over the next couple of weeks. Email us, mediahub at thpreport.com. Uh, our Facebook page, uh, uh, facebook.com forward slash um, midweek move. Reach out to us. Let us know how we can help you grow. Uh, we're not going to shy away from a lot of stuff, but we're going to answer it truthfully and we're going to answer you what the Word of God says. Yep. So until next time, have a great week.